So a little secret about Facebook employees, we're all actually uh, closet sociologists. You'll often see the shuttle taking us uh, from Facebook to Stanford Library, where we eagerly check out books on the history of designing public space. That was a joke. I don't think anybody here has ever been to Stanford Library, at least since they dropped out of school. Um, but seriously, there is a pretty cool sociologist who talked a lot about the relationship between public space and community. And his name's Ray Oldenburg. He's behind me. Um, he's a pretty sharp dude. And his take on this whole thing was this. There are three places that matter. The first place is home. Home is where you wake up. It's where you go to sleep. It's where your family is. It's where you eat. And it's where you go to digest and reflect upon the experiences that you have during the day. The second place is work. Work is the economic engine of society. Work is where we work our brains and our muscles. It's where we invest our time and energy in creating something that's greater than ourselves and that we believe in. And ourselves and that we believe in. And the third place, he said, is actually the most important and the most critical as the foundation for society and community that we live in. And he coined this term, the third place. The third place is the bar, the restaurant, the library, the street outside where people are walking by. It's the barber shop, it's the newsstand, it's the places where we go and literally share our lives with each other. It's where we run into strangers. It's where deliberation and discussion and random run-ins happen. And Oldenburg made a pretty, a pretty crazy hypothesis, which was that the technology that we were creating in the 20th century were in danger of destroying the third place. That there was a fear that now that we had televisions and phones and radios, we would just sit at home in our couches. Rather than going to the amphitheater to watch the play, we'd sit at home and watch TV. And rather than going out to have coffee, we'd just call our friends on the phone. And that rather than experiencing the life outside, we'd cloister ourselves indoors, content with our own private, personal venues into what was going on in the world. And that what would have happened over time is that the third place would be destroyed and we'd be kind of sitting there in these little bubbles, right? It's like uh, Wally, with the fat people rolling around in their bubbles, right? And so the theory here, and the entire goal of this, of this product, and in general of what we're trying to develop here, is that the third place is alive and well, and that technology can actually be the thing that pulls us away from the TV and out to the nightclub or out to the concert or out to the theater, or out to the bar. That's what we're most excited about. Technology does not need to estrange us from one another. So where is this all headed? Maybe one day you walk into a bar for the first time, or a restaurant, and you sit down at the bar, and you put your magical 10 years in the future phone down, or whatever it is, it's probably not gonna be a phone even. And suddenly it starts to glow. And it says, hey, this is what people that you, you're friends with order here. This is what you might drink. And then it starts to pop up these memories. Like these are the photos and the stories that your friends told here. Go check out this thing that's written above you know, the urinal that your friend wrote about when they were here eight months ago. And what starts to happen is that the physical reality that we're in comes alive with the human stories that we've told there. I'm particularly excited to see the nut house history. You guys know the nut house, it's right down the street. See you there after this event. We can all check in for the first time. Antonio's, <laughs> thank you. And when we go to these big events, you go to Chicago, let's say maybe you grew up in Chicago and Lollapalooza was there a couple weekends ago. 
You know that hundreds of your friends are there, but you can't find them. There's just a big crowd of people, so you're rocking out to the music, and you know it's a missed connection. Now not only will you be able to find those people and meet up with them and hang out and watch the show, but when it's done, one day, you'll go to a page, and on that page will be our collective memory. It will be the stories and the photos and the videos and the recordings and the things we saw and the stories we shared and the things we felt and had and lived there together, memorialized. That's dope. Too many of our human stories are still collecting dust on the shelves of our studies at home. When we started Facebook, we had the idea that we'd be sharing these stories with each other in real time, and we'd be available to read and react to what was going on with the people that we weren't immediately with, and that those stories might get a little bit more attention from the people that you want to see them. Now those stories are gonna be placed. Those stories are gonna be pinned to a physical location, so that maybe one day, in 20 years, our children will go to Ocean Beach on San Francisco, and their little magical thing will start to vibrate. And it'll say, you know, this is where your parents had their first kiss. You know, this is the photo they took right afterwards, and this is what their friends were saying about that photo. So we're really pumped, not just about what we're releasing today, but about the idea that these stories can be pinned to a physical location and shared with us and the people around us for years to come. Anyway.